Hello. Hi there. Do I have anybody with me today? Today we are going to draw a squirrel and I have to give you all my biggest apologies for not being here last week. I felt awful um, letting you all down. But today I'm feeling much better and I have everything in place and rather than you seeing my face, you don't need to see me. I thought I would just get it all set up and just makes it a bit easier so that I'm not having to turn the camera around and I hope everybody can see all right. Is everybody all right? Hi Pat, how are you? How's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? Hi Fiona. Good, it's really nice to have you all with me. Thank you for joining me. I don't have a finished squirrel to show you. I haven't, I was really poorly for three days. And then I've been playing catch up this week with everything else because I've been filming my um, online workshops and things. So I've got a bit of a squirrel and you're probably going to make fun of me saying it because I'm Scottish and I do say squirrel a bit funny. Ashley and Laura are always making fun of me. But um, hi Linda, hi Sam. But um, anyway, I have a little bit of a squirrel and we will, I'll show you how to get one, how to get one drawn up and how to layer it up with the fur and um, I look forward to seeing what you all create with it. So what time is it? Yeah, it's four o'clock. Hopefully I have everybody here who wants to join me today. Um, so what I'm using today is I'm going to draw on just extra smooth card. I've got A5 size and I'm going to just put it here. I'll just put that picture to the side. Can everybody see okay? Now all I've done is I have got gone and got a selection of oranges and browns. So here's the selection and I'm just going to go for what I think. So if you have some browns and orange tones, you'll need a black. If you want to give him rosy cheeks, you'll need some pinks and you'll need some cream and some white. And your pencil, I'm using a technical pencil, but you can use whatever you like. And a button. Hi, Carl. How are you? And the button, my paper's got all bits on it. The button that I'm using size-wise is, let me get my ruler. Doesn't really matter what size, but it's just short of two millimetres. You can do whatever size you like. So, is everybody ready to get started? I shall, if I don't get to comment or speak to you during the drawing, I'll get back to you at the end. So, we've got our button and again, everybody's used to what we do now, we draw around our button. They're a really good starting point. It gives us our eye, it gives us a circle, it gives us something to work around. So... There, we have our circle. So for, her, for his eye, so not like the girl's eyes, we're going to do, um, if you've got a ruler, I didn't mention that at the start, but you don't need to have a ruler, but if you can just go di diagonally through the circle, so that it's almost halved, but going down at an angle, and then draw a little dot at either side, then that gives you something to draw towards to make his eye more oval so with that I'm now going to start at this dot and just follow the circle that we've already got just follow it around coming inside the circle a little bit and coming to meet this little dot that we've just done that gives us the bottom of his eye and then we'll do the same going over the top you can come through the circle if you want to give him a smaller eye. If you want to give him a really big eye, you can take it right the way up, but just not right over the top or else he looks too starey. So I'm going to bring it through about here. So there, that gives us a nice oval shape. And then we can rub out um, what's 
what's been left out of the circle. So there we go, that's us, we've got our starting point. It's always nice just to get that first bit down. And I hope everybody's starting to feel a bit more confident with their drawing. I'm getting so many messages from people who are shocked at their own abilities. And it's really nice. It's really nice to see that people are discovering that they are all artists. You are all little artists. So I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. So now I'm going to use this shape for his to create the rest of his head. So I'm going to start about here and just following the shape of the circle, bring it around, down maybe to about here, just about here, and then bring it around a bit to bring out for his nose. So maybe about there. Now don't be worried, you know, if we make mistakes, we just rub it out. If I make mistakes during the live, I tend to just go with it. It doesn't really matter. There's no pressure. It's all just about giving it a go. And then bring it around about here. So there we've got his, his nose and, and his mouth. And then we can give him, you can give him a little love heart nose. Or you could just give him the usual type nose that you see on them but they yeah, are giving them a little bit of a a little bit of a nose <laughs> and then his mouth will roughly come up round about here so there we've got the first half now we're going to take it round i'm wondering if my hand's going to get in the way yeah i have to draw at funny angles sometimes so so i can't do it that way sorry so I'm going to have to come in and we're going to go over the top now and just bring it around about there and then we're going to put his ears in. So you, when it's whimsical you can have him, give him big massive ears if you like or you can have them small or you can just whatever you feel. I'm not quite sure how my ears going at the minute but there we've got an ear. And I'm going to rub out now this little part of his head. So straight away there, he's got an ear. So he's doing all right, this squirrel. He's got he's got an eye and he's got an ear and he's got a nose. He might not even look like a squirrel. He looks a bit more like a kangaroo, actually. But never mind. Okay, right, now for his second ear. It's a bit further away, so it might be a little bit smaller. So there, about there. So if we make mistakes, just rub it out. And if I'm going too fast, don't worry, because I'll keep it on my page, so you can come back and have a little go later. Right, so now we've got his head. I'm going to just make it a little bit more rounder here and bring it down. Around about there, so it's ending just quite close to his face. So we bring it in a little bit, and then for the rest of his body... I'm going to bring it out so he's sitting kind of hunched up. So, so when I'm at home and drawing, I'm always rubbing out. I think, oh, I don't like that line. I'm going to rub that out. So, you know, don't get hung up on what, what marks you're making first time round. And every time you draw, you're enhancing your skills. You're only ever going to get better. So there, we've given him a bit of a body. I'm going to come back up here now to under his nose and just give us an idea of where he's the rest of his body. Right, we're going to give him an arm. So if you like, you can do like a, a sort of circle here just to give you an idea of his arm because you can rub that out if that helps you to see the position. And then, so I was looking at their arms. They're kind of, they've, got, they've actually got fingers and things. They're quite strange, but... So, they are lovely though, they're really cute. So there, we've gotten to here. So, if you don't like drawing fingers and you're doing a whimsical one, you can just round it off. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to do fingers, then do you can do it round and then just put your, your lines in. And if you're not happy with them, rub them out. 
and you can have them holding a little nut or a flower or whatever you want to have them holding and then we'll rub this out this little circle bit right now we've got his legs to do so they kind of come round a bit like a bit like a bit like kangaroos actually so a little bit like that and then we're going to give him another one maybe here like so that's maybe a bit fat there I'm going to rub that out so I think I've got some children again. I've got some lovely regular children who are drawn along with me. There's um, Lola. She has been doing amazing. She's 11. And um, I think I've got Maya. She's drawn today. So it's really nice to have some kids. So please let me know if, if you've got kids drawn along with you or if, if it's adults drawn or men or whatever. It's really nice now. Right, I'm not happy with that now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out his back a little bit. And rub this little bit. See? It's great having a rubber. Is everybody doing okay? Let me know if you're all still with me. Right, now we're gonna round flatten off the bottom because he's gonna be sitting on a branch or something and give him some feet so just little feet like a bit like so which we'll do for now and then this one the same so there we've given him some sort of body oh you've not been able to see did you miss me doing the bottom there i've just realized i might have been off the page let me know and I'll do it again. Right, we're going to do his tail. So we'll bring his tail out from the bottom here. And following the shape of his back. You can't see the feet. Right, let me do the feet again. Let me do, I'll do the feet again for you. Right, my apologies for you not seeing the feet. Okay, we'll get the bottom bit now. Let's rub this bit. Let me rub all this bit out again. Right. I'm sorry that you didn't see his feet. We'll do it again, okay? This is the hard part of me drawing. <laughs> Keeping it on camera. Right, so we're going to bring his body down to about here and we're going to give him his hind leg. So just, just curl it around. Keep it going in the same sort of direction as what you've just done with his tummy. And bring it down. And then his feet We'll bring his bottom down because he's going to be sitting on something so you can have him on a branch or um, on the ground whatever you fancy i like seeing all your interpretations at the end so then we'll just bring his little foot in here that's not the best feet i've ever done i have to say but never mind there it gives us a little bit of a basis. Yeah, we can always rub out and fix it as we're going when we realise we're not happy. Right, we're going to do his tail. I think that's the favourite part, isn't it? Giving him a tail, because that's what will make him really look like a squirrel. Right, so coming out from his the bottom here, just bring it out slightly and then following the shape of his back, bring it up, curling all the way up round his back, and just as we get to before his neck, start to whirl it out a little bit. Just give it an archy bit. And then 
maybe from his head here, start to bring it out. And now you can see that you're going to go all the way around. I'm not at a good angle, sorry, so I'm a bit... So I just roughly... So there you've kind of got his tail. Have we got an outline, everybody? Right. Now the fun part. Getting them all coloured. Right, so like before, I always say to start with your lightest colours first. I'm using a, a selection today of Faber-Castell and the Prisma colours um, because I just wanted to have loads of different shades of oranges and browns. So it doesn't matter what you're using because they all work really well together. But whatever you want to start off with, get your lightest colour first. So I'm just looking for what my lightest colour is going to be. Yeah, I'm going to actually use a Derwent Light Sienna, but it's the same as the the Light Flesh as well. It's almost, it's a little bit lighter, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll get something down onto, so I'm going to use this around his eye. So let me see if you can see, okay. You won't really see much with this colour because it's so light, but just... We're just going to take this colour all the way around the outline of his eye in our little light circular motions. Let me know if you're just new. I do have a lot of people who have been here every week. We've been here now for seven weeks in isolation and um, with everything going on. And it's been quite nice for me to have so many regular people, but it's really nice to know if I have some new people as well. So we'll go all the way around and if you want to put some sparkles in his eye we'll do that as well just with our normal pencil again so we'll come around I'm going to give him a big sparkle the sparkles are what make them come alive really and when you've got the eyes and you've got the emotion so there we put, I'm going to put a couple here. I'm not going to colour in the pupil of the eye today. Or I might. We'll see what kind of time we've got. But um, I think you're all really good now at doing your own eyes. I'm going to try and show you more of the fur. So I've left a little bit of a white space between the line going around his eye and now doing from the top of his head... In the light circular motions and just in case anybody's new I'll just explain why I do that it's because it allows the pig pigment to get into the paper and if you can practice as well doing your little light strokes practice a really good practice for everybody who's enjoying the colouring and shading I'm going to do it up here it's just a practice doing like a feather touch as light as you possibly can so you can barely see it and that's your first layer. And that is what you want to achieve. You don't want to be going in hard like this. If I do, I'm going to do what you're not meant to do. So for one, you can break your pencil. And two, you burnish it, which means that you lose the grip of the paper. You make it shiny and you can't layer on top of it. So if you want to set one evening when, with your pencils, just practice doing different pressures. And you'll be amazed at how many different pressures you can get. And it'll really help you when you want to do your colouring and layering and when you want to get a nice smooth finish. So there we've got our first little layer. Now what you're going to do now is you want to colour most of his body in this light, light colour. But I'm just going to do a little bit here so I can start showing you another layer because the hour does go in really, really fast. Doesn't it? As past hours have proved. Right, now I'm going to get another another shade so a little bit darker than what you've done the color that I'm going to use is terracotta but you can use in any orangey shades or light browns or whatever color you want to do hi Janice I've got a newbie Justin or Justine sorry it's so so lovely to have you join us thank you I hope you enjoy it so we're now going to go in with little flicks can you see what I'm doing 
so just tiny little lines like so and you're going to take these up over over all of this area and if you keep turning your pencil every now and again you'll start to get the sharp end again you really want sharp pencils for this you can't do this with blunt it you won't get you won't get the illusion of fur and if you just want to go over that you can come back down and go over that and you'll start to see it build up you want to have lots i'm going to bring it down as a bit down to his nose as well maybe here and just fall and you're going to go the, sh the direction of his head so when his head starts tilting you're going to start tilting your little flicks and you can bring them so they're coming out of the line as well and then it looks more like it starts to look more like hair that's not just flat and just follow that all the way around now, if I was at home, I would have rubbed this bit back out again. I would have made this little bit a little bit bigger. I am at home, but I mean, if I was sitting at home, just drawn by myself, I would not have been happy with that bit, and I would have made that a little bit bigger. But it doesn't matter. It's not about. It's not about the end product, really. It's about having some time, just being a bit mindful, and just enjoying the process, and discovering what you can actually achieve just with your pencils. So there we've got our first layer and this is gonna, it's quite a long, a long process when you're doing fur. So it's a lot of, a lot of the same, a lot of layers, doing your little lines and then building up different colors and then the more layers and the more little lines you've got, the more it, becomes like fur and it looks like it has depth and all the rest of it so there we've got this layer and we'll do the same now with a darker tone I'm going to use Terre de Sienne Sienna Brown and do exactly the same again now this pencil's not as sharp let me just sharpen my pencil because if it's blunt at all, it just doesn't work. I did sharpen them all before. So yeah, you really want a sharp point on your pencil. And so we're going to do the same again. Little flicky lines coming out over the edges, moving in the direction of his head. And by the time you've done a few layers of this, then you'll start to see. You can bring in darker brown. See, I'm going to try and make his head look a bit bigger by bringing it out over the line now, because I wasn't happy with that wee bit. It's quite... So, you can see you have a lot of homework to do, can you? <laughs> So good. We've so what have we done so far? Over the the weeks we've done an eye, and we've done a colouring of stamp the hope doing her face. We've done um, a seahorse, and we've done a deer with a little bird. We've also done a little boy with a wolf, a little side profile boy with a wolf. And we have done an owl. So we've been really busy. We've got quite a lot. Uh, quite a lot of things that we've been achieving. Right. So anyway. You're going to continue doing that. And all the way down his back. And I'm going to start doing a bit of his tail. Because how long have we got? Yeah it's okay. We've got plenty of time. So with the first colour that we used. I used the light sienna. Mine keeps freezing. Okay, I'm sorry about that, Anne. I hope that you can get to watch later. So with with the light sienna or your lightest colour, you want to, with little circular motions, fill in as much of his tail as you can. You really want this as your base coat so that you've got your first layer all over his tail. 
I'm not going to color all of it because it just takes so long but I'm going to come up around his back because I want to show you how to shade in under his back and you want to do this a lot slower and and more relaxed than what I'm doing I'm just trying to show you so that you've got something that you can you can do tonight or over the weekend or whenever you've got some free time so you can you can try and undo this one now with me if you like but it's quite nice if you can come back to it later and do it properly I hate rushing it for you it's just such a long process it takes me hours to do my drawings so the hour on Facebook really doesn't allow me to do that oh yeah we did bubbles in a mermaid too Pat I forgot about that Gosh, we've done loads, haven't we? Right, now I've got... What have I got? I've got goldenrod. So it's a kind of orangey tone. So I'm going to do the same with the little circular motions with this one as well. So going over the top of that first layer, find another colour. And I know there's a little girl, Lola, who has specifically, her mummy's gone out and bought her some Faber-Castell pencils, bless her. And they sent me a photograph of her, stood with her lovely pencils in her little box, ready to do some colouring, and, and she's doing a lovely job. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, Lola, that you're enjoying working with your Faber-Castell pencils. I do think you'll feel a difference. And in saying that, I'm using a Prismacolor, but... Let me see if I've, I've got, I just, I need to buy myself some more Faber-Castell, that's what's wrong, I'm running out of colours. But Faber-Castell are oil based and these Prisma colours are wax based, so, but they all work well together. And it just shows you that you can just use whatever pencils. So, and thank you to everybody as well who have all subscribed onto my online classes. I really am amazed. There's so many of you. Thank you so much. I hope you really enjoy them. We've got a whole year of drawing now. And I've got a whole year of filming and recording to do. <laughs> so there, you're going to now, so you'll do both these layers. You want to keep it a little bit lighter up at the top. What I would do at the top is if you've got a white or a cream, put that down as your base up here. Let me make sure we're still in the, and yeah. So make that really light here because the tip tends to be a lot lighter and the rest a lot darker. So we've done two layers down here. Now I'm going to get another dark shade. I'm going to use some browns now so I've got I've got burnt sienna this is a Faber Castell one and so from the bottom like what we did on his head little flicks let me see I have to make sure my hands not getting in the way so just tiny ever so small tiny little flicks and then that gives the illusion of short fur and you're going to go over these with several other shades of pencil. And then as you do that, you'll start to see how you build up some depth in there. But this is the reason why I don't have a full squirrel to show you is because it's ever so time consuming. But it's a lovely, it's a lovely project to do. If you're enjoying getting to know your pencils and you're enjoying your drawing, and you enjoy drawing animals, then this is good. So every time you've done a few strokes, if you just slightly tilt your pencil around a little bit, you'll start to get the sharp ends again. So that's why I twizzle my pencil a lot. So you're going to fo follow this motion all the way up around in the direction of his tail. So you kind of want them to swoop around as you're going around the corner. And continue that all the way up. 
Now, I'm going to just draw a little bit like darker in here on this line that's his back. Use your darker pencil and this is going to end up being a shadow in here. And then you'll have your strokes coming out from here as well and working their way up round his tail. I'm just gonna how are we all doing how's everybody is everybody managing to keep up is everybody following me okay we have just seen a wee few bits on his head that need... is everybody drawing along with me or watching until later some people just watching let me know let me know if you're enjoying it, if you want me to do anything different. Just move them up a little bit. So you can have some of the hairs going just slightly in different directions every now and again and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Uh, Marie, you're drawn with me and Sam, as you see, everything's all good. Good. It's hard for me, it's hard for you to come away from doing your drawing to re respond to me isn't it I just don't know if you're ever there I sometimes think I'm just sitting here on my own so just continue doing that all the way up I'm going to start bringing that out a little bit from his back now remember you're going to have had this two shades all the way up here because I haven't coloured all of the bottom layer in but I'm just going to show you how. I'm going to colour some of it. So I'm going to go back to my sienna, if I can find it, and just get some more of this tail. So that I can show you properly. What we need is a five hour Facebook Live one day. <laughs> if my nerves could take it. I do get nervous showing you how to draw. I get ever so nervous before it's time to go live. I think, why, why am I doing this to myself? But I like to see, I like the feedback at the end for people who's enjoyed it and for people who are discovering that they can draw. I get a nice feeling when I know that people are starting to realise their abilities. So I'll just keep putting myself through it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's okay, Laurie. You can do it later. Thank you for joining me. It's lovely to have you here. So I've done the base layer all the way around, but I've left the, the tip with the cream. Okay. This little bit needs another wee bit of a layer. And if I was doing this properly, I would do it much slower and there wouldn't be any white spaces there. I would be doing it really nice and slow and in circular motions to get in so that you're not having any circles or lines. You want that all really to be nice and even and smooth for your first layer. And then you'll find that the pencils will layer up better on it and you'll get more depth with your colouring. We'll just colour this little bit as well. Okay, and same, you do all of his body with this colour. But let's get his tail. Right, what do I want now? So I'm going to bring some orange tones in. I have, which one will I use? I'm going to use the car, cardamom orange. Ah, oh, thank you, Gail. Yeah, just pretend that you're not all there, Laurie. <laughs> so we're going to go in now where we've already been. And with the orange, just start to do the same again, your little lines. And with his tail, you'll have areas that are darker. So you'll be definitely darker down the bottom. You'll be darker in here. And then you'll have areas that might be a bit lighter. So... You don't have to 
completely cover all of it in certain colours if you know what I mean just try and get a little bit of variation with the colour and just imagine if the sun was shining on his tail which areas would be highlighted and which areas would be darker but in saying that when you're doing whimsical it doesn't really matter but it's just if you want to start considering those things then so just little lines it's very relaxing though but now you know how much work goes into all these the artists that do all the actual real portrait the dogs and the animals I've got some amazing artists and you can just see how long it's taken them to do that because they've had to do every single little line and loads of layers so you can then go up all the way up with the orange i'm going to bring some of the orange up in here so everybody who has drawn along, I hope that you can all share your work in my group. For anybody who's just joined, my group is called Drawing, Colouring, Shading and Stamping with a dash of D. And it's a lovely group. I get lots of people posting their finished pictures in there and I do, it's the highlight of my week going in to see what everybody's done. So please do feel free to share what you've done in there. So now I'm going to I'm going to mix it up again and bring in another shade. You're all getting the gist now. Are you all getting into the flow? Into the flow of what you have to do. So I'm going to use burnt sienna again. Just have a play with your colours. There's there's no rules with it. You know, don't get hung up on what colours you use. Just you'll. You, the best way to get to know your pencils and what works right for you is just having a play, experimenting and if it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, then it's a learning curve. So it's never wasted and please keep everything that you draw because you can always look back and you'll see your progress. Bring some of the little lines out over his, over the line that you've done as well. And my pencil's starting to need sharpened really, but never mind. Just keep turning it around and you'll keep getting your little sharp edge. You can see that it's quite time consuming. So that's what you'll continue doing and we'll get a little bit darker in here. So start putting in a little bit of a shadow here. So just back to your little circular motions and make this little bit dark right up the back of his head as well because his tail's hiding the light in there. And just little circular motions with a brown and can go in there later with with a black or a darker brown and just darken this area up you can do that at the end as well you can continue doing all your little strokes and then come in at the end and, and start to do your shadows and things so don't feel like you have to do it in the order that i'm doing i'm just trying to show you as many little tips as i can to help you do it on your own so just follow that a little bit down here, just and then you would be really black in here. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the black. Whoops. And just drag some of it. So you can do your line, but then if you just drag some of the black out, it makes it look a bit softer and gradual it doesn't look so harsh and you can use some of that black then to graduate some of the little strokes coming out as well 
Are you starting to feel it building up? Are you getting any good results, everybody? So I'll just do that and then same, just graduate that, get that darkness in there with your black and graduate it out and then have some little lines. So you do want little bits of your, your black on top as well. So once you've done lots and lots of layers, I would go over the top just every, every, every now and again with some black as well. So I'm going to do his ears now. We've got most of his tail done. I'm going to do his face actually and his ears now. I miss not doing the eye because the eyes, can we do the eye? Yeah, let's do the eye, even if it takes me doing it a bit longer. We've got, we've got a wee while. Right, usually I do lots of different layers with the eye and I do um, either a, a brown or a indigo blue or something on the first layer, but I'm just going to go straight in with the black just now, just to start giving you the effect a bit quicker. So, I always start with the eyes, so I feel a bit weird when I'm not doing it. The eyes what gives gives the character and, so, so little circular motions inside his eye and you would need to do quite a few layers of this, but if you're impatient and want the instant black impact, then just use a black fine liner, one of these, or if the children are doing it, so a felt tip pen or something, because really you want this to be really black. And that's what gives a bit of depth in the eye. And you can see by just doing the black, I'm hoping you can see the difference by when on the previous times when I've done a different shade underneath. It looks much more vibrant and um, it gives it just a bit more depth than when you just do it just with the black on its own. So, but it, it allows you to see, doesn't it? And then with, with your black, just fill in this line. Whoops, I'm going over the edge a bit. I'm not at the right angle. I've got the camera in front of me. <laughs> so then try and drag some of that up into the eye. And so with each layer, you change in your pressure. So you start off really, really light, and then you would do a few layers of it really, really light. And then once it starts to get to the place where you want it to be, you can start applying more pressure. So I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna start applying pressure, even though I shouldn't, because you need to do a lot more layers. But I just wanna show you how it starts to shine up his eye and you've, it means that you've burnished the, the paper. So there's not a lot you can do once you've done that, but if you're happy with his eye being really, really black, then you can go ahead and just apply a bit more pressure. But if you've got some more different colored layers in there, then it looks even better when you burnish it. See, he looks, he looks a bit better now that he's got an eye, doesn't he? He didn't really feel like a character before. They need their eyes, don't they? So there, we've got his wee eye done. That actually needs a few more layers. We need to bring in this line as well. Right, now I'm going to get a darker brown and take that around his eye. There, and when you do that, you start to... There, he's starting to look a bit better now. The little circular motions. And you can bring that down into a peak or 
or not. It's up to you. And I'm going to do his nose, so some black on his nose. So give him a little bit of a sparkle somewhere on his nose. I'm going to give him a bit there. I'm getting notifications to say that Lola should be at dancing, but no, she shouldn't be at dancing. <laughs> On a normal day, she would be at dancing now, but with lockdown, she's not. So there, he's got his nose. And whatever kind of mouth you want to give him, you can have him happy. Happy, you would have it really curly. If you have him just content, then maybe straight. If you want him sad, give it a little tilt down. I don't really want him to be sad, but he looks a little bit. And then with one of your browns, just come up round his nose as well. Follow it around and that just... I'm going to just go up that line with that brown. And I'm going to emphasise this bit as well. So with the light sienna or with your lightest tone, whichever you're using, I would leave a little bit of white. So I'm having this bit of white and still a little line there, white and then now you can give him a big pink rosy cheek if you like. Where is Lola? What well, my Lola, she has decided she's not bothered about doing these with me anymore. <laughs> she's sitting in the sitting room with her daddy. Her daddy's working on his laptop and she's doing her maths homework, I think. But she, I think she's lost interest in the Facebook lives. <laughs> Bless her. She's still drawing though. She's doing lots of drawing at home. there we just continue with that now if you want to give him a pink cheek you can or little little dots for his um where his whiskers would be give him a little prick because i've got a brown a brown fine liner but you can use your pencils and things or what i don't know if i want to give him dark i'll do it anyway just i don't know what they're going to look like yeah a little Little whisker things, whatever you want to call them. Will we give him a pink cheek? Do you want him to look whimsical? Or do you want him to look real? Well, not real, real, but... Well, you, you, you can have the choice. I'll, I'll give him a pink cheek so that you can see what he looks like. And if you fancy it, then you can do it as well. And if not, you can keep it out. So if you start in the centre and then gradually work round, then you've got more control little circular motions until you build it up to the size that you want it to be. So I might do it a little bit bigger. So there you can see you've got control if you just start in the centre and work your way out. So that's what he looks like with a pink cheek. And just put another extra few layers of different shades of pink on top of that to make him look a bit more vibrant. We'll do his ears now. Right. What do we need to do for his ears? Let me have a think. Where's my normal pencil? Right, so I've got my normal pencil again. And we're just going to find where the inside of his ear is going to be. And just bring it round. So just like so. And this ear is facing the other way. So this is just going to have fur on it. So that's going to be his inside ear and fur. So with our light sienna. With our base colour or whatever your base colour is. Just start to fill in round his ear and some inside as well 
If you want to be really whimsical, you could have made inside his ears pink. You could make him different colours. He doesn't need to be a brown squirrel. He could be purple or pink or whatever you like. There's no rules. So I'm using... No, I'm not using that one. I'm going to use um, Beaster, which is one of the Faber-Castells. But if you have any kind of brown... Which is going to continue, you're going to continue this little bit. But we're going to have some hairs coming up around his ear. So, just little little lines every now and again. Bring it out over, over that line that you've done. And just follow it up. And at the top, give him quite a few so that you're making it. Quite, quite long hairs going off in different directions but going off in different directions on the outside but still moving in the direction of the ear if that makes sense make it a little bit darker up here so just put a little bit of shade in and then the same inside his ear a little bit darker, so just little circular motions along this line. So just coming out, so start off with the line and then drag little bits of colour out. And then that starts to give the illusion of the inside of his ear being a little bit darker. Just line up there. A bit dark here. We could get some black in there as well. Another few hairs. How are we all doing? Is everybody still with me? I keep getting football notifications. I've had to use Ashley's phone. <laughs> Because remember I dropped mine and I had bad sound. I haven't got a new phone yet. It works in every way other than on Facebook Live. So I'm borrowing Ashley's phone and I keep getting football notifications. <laughs> right, so this year is going to be darker. So again with your lightest shade first. And then building up like what you're going to do with his tail. Are oh, you still here, Sam? Thank you. That's nice to know. I'm happy that there's still people here. Let me know if I'm helping you or hindering you. <laughs> so... I'm just going to darken up this little bit here because that's a little bit where his ears, his ears coming out over here. So this little bit is going to be darker and then some hairs coming up around his ear again in the same style that we've been doing. Oh good, I'm helping you Marie. That's good to know. Just a little pointy bit at the top and lots and lots of little strokes going up his ear and I'm just going to maybe leave the top bit a little bit lighter and this would need a few more layers. So is everybody enjoying doing a squirrel and is everybody laughing at my accent when I say it? So I'm going to do some more layers on this little bit here and some more on no, what we're going to do. We're going to start doing a bit of his arm, I think. Yeah, we'll start doing the same on his arm. So with our lightest colour. Oh good, you're all enjoying it. Oh, that's good. 
I always feel better when I know that. I go from being really nervous thinking, why am I putting myself through this? To thinking, is anybody actually there? Maybe people just don't even care and I'm just sitting here on my own. And then when I get your messages, I think, right, it's all worth it. It sounds normal, me seeing a squirrel. <laughs> Maria, are you from Scotland as well? I get made such a fun off down here. I'm down in Oundle and I was in Milton Keynes before that and everybody makes fun of me when I say it. They think it's hilarious and they ask me to say things like curly whirly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's why you don't you don't think it sounds strange Marie because you're from from the same neck of the woods as me right now I'm going to use some brown so as you can see what we're doing is just lots of layers of lots of different tones of oranges and browns and that is basically what you're doing the whole way through and if you wanted to do colourful, so if there's kids there and they want to try again late and they just don't want to do a brown one, do it in lots of different shades of pinks and purples or whatever colour you want to do. It's just about having a play and enjoying what you're doing and then enjoying the end outcome and relaxing and having time out for yourself. All of these things. just these little flicks and the more little lines and flicks you do with lots of different shades and colours the more you're building up the illusion that there's lots of layers of, of fur so we'll do a little bit in here as well just make it darker and maybe a wee bit of fur there So um, are you going to have him holding a nut or a little flower? I mean, don't be doing these little circles on your nice pictures like what I, I was doing showing you. You can have a little bird coming out here or some branches. So let me see. Where's my pencil? So you can have some, maybe some branches coming out here. You could have a little bird sitting there. And he's maybe going to give the little bird some a love heart. You could have the little hearts that we have caught that we have our things carrying, or it could be a flower, or an inner strength symbol, or yeah, I'm not bothered about that heart. I would rub that out. So have some little branches so you can have them just squiggly, just like so. And if you wanted to, you can have leaves on there. Or you could have the little flowers that I showed you last week, which was just an eight with another eight going through it. You could have lots of them. They're, they're really nice, mindful things to draw. Another eight. So, and you could have them coming out here as well. So it looks like he's inside a tree. So just ignore those circles that I did. You could have nice flowers. We should maybe have a night, a day where I do lots of flowers. So you might like drawing the flowers. So that's quite a nice, easy way to do a rose. That one. I'll show you another day some flowers if you want me to. Maybe I have another leaf up here. And another leaf here. Um, have some more coming in here. Or these could equally be cracks on the wall. He could be sitting on a wall next to a wall, and these are all cracks. So we'll do another little flower. So just a little round, like so, a squiggly round, not. 
Um, the type of paper is extra smooth, so I always use either extra smooth 300 GSM or I use um, hot pressed watercolour card. I don't ever use the cold pressed card because it's got a lot of texture on it and you can't get a nice effect with your pencils. So I um, hope that helps. So a little squiggly circle. Bring it down a bit. And then if we just do a little one of those, yeah, and then just keep doing that all the way around, like that, and then bring it around so it's coming around onto the next one, so it's kind of folding around, yeah, and then each time you do it, I can't do it there because I've got that bit lying there, but each time you do it, you make it a little bit bigger, like so. And then when you start shading that in, it becomes a rose. It's not really at the right angle there, but hopefully that gives you an idea. And then you can have little leaves coming out of there as well. So, little figure eights. Have a play. I like doing little flowers and things. So then you can have more coming in up, up the back as well. So we'll, we'll have them sitting on a branch. So... Have them coming along like so. And then... Curl it down so it looks like he's in a tree. And you can have little branches coming out as well with your little flowers on. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I went off the page again. Did you know did you miss that? Sorry. My battery's starting to run low. Let me just close that. Let me just get my charger. My battery's gonna die. Okay. Oh, it doesn't reach. One second, I just need to get an adapter. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to stick this in to stop my phone from dying. So did you miss the hole of the bottom again? Let me rub that out then. This is something that I do. Sorry, I get carried away with drawing and I forget where, where it is on the phone. My apologies. Okay. So we just draw draw a line under his bottom, like so, and then just follow it along. You can make it as fat or as thin as you like, and then just bring it around the corner, and then make it look like he's sitting on a tree. Let me just get rid of that rubber. And then you can have some more of your little squiggly branches coming out with your little flowers if you like. See how addictive are those little double eight flowers? I think you'll enjoy drawing them. And then I'm going to have this just come in. Make it look like it's a tree but you can't actually see it. 
and then maybe have just some more branches coming in just every now and again so they're just like just little lines like so and you can maybe do little flowers like that they're really nice to doodle aren't they little flowers so I'm, I would probably rub out him giving them the heart. I don't think he looks like a squirrel that would give a heart. I think he would give something else. Maybe some inner strengths. It's quite nice to look up what your animals symbolise. And um, let that be your guide as to what kind of symbol you would like them to give. Because so, some of them are protectors or some of them are... Um, intuitive or you know giving you giving you guidance so it's quite nice just to do a little bit of research on what your animal means I did look up what the squirrel meant on the day when I had the migraine and I forget now what it was because I was going to mention that and now now I don't know what what he was I think he was a protect was he a protect I can't remember I'd be telling a lie so have a little look and see what he symbolises and maybe that, that can decipher what, what he gives. You could have a little bird sitting up here. I'm rubbing away the heart because I'm just not feeling it. Or you could just put your words in and you could just have him saying something. So, and I think I would rub that out as well because he looks, I think he's pregnant. <laughs> a pregnant squirrel. So we have, we've gone over our hour, We're, we've reached five o'clock, but I'm going to just do another little bit of the darker colours up here. So let's get a darker brown, so something like a walnut brown or dark umber or something like that. And just start bringing that in to deepen the illusion of the hairs again you use plenty of oranges as well especially in his tail you know the he when i was looking at pictures of them they do have lots and lots of oranges oranges and browns Make that a little bit then near dark. So you can see how it would take a while to complete your squirrel. So I'll, I'm expecting it'll be a few days before I start to see some in the group. But there we've got a little bit and put a little bit darker up here. A little bit darker here. Start going in with your blacks as well. But this one's called, this bright brown umber is quite a good one to get in there for your shadows. He also needs a little bit more going on underneath his eye. So I'm going to use some orange and just that it helps to highlight. Now you can give him eyelashes if you want. He might suit having some nice little eyelashes or some long ones coming down. It's up to you. So we'll put some orange up here as well. So his eye needs to be a lot blacker. And he needs a lot more layers, a lot more sh um, oranges and browns. But I think I'm going to have to leave you now. I have to start dinners. <laughs> I hope I've given you enough for you to get to get doing something with your little squirrels tonight and over the weekend. This needs some more shading as well. I'm going to put some orange on top of his cheek so you can see how you can build up the colour with some pinks and oranges as well. So hopefully that's given you some homework. Is everybody happy?
Yeah, it needs to be darker in there. So there. I shall leave you all to see what you can do. Has everybody enjoyed it? Good. As long as you're all enjoying doing it, then I'm quite happy to continue. We'll do it all the way until things return into normal. I'm happy to come and give you something to do on a Friday. So, um, yes. Everybody happy? That's good. You're welcome. You're welcome, Sam. As long as you're enjoying it. I shall let you all go. And um, I look forward to seeing what you put into the group this week. I hope you all stay safe and well. And I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Good. You're welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Heather and Carol. Thank you, everybody, for joining me again. Will I see you all again next week? And let me know. Go into my group and let me know what you fancy. I've had some requests for dogs and... Um, what else have I had requests for? Frogs and um, I can't remember everything but if you want to do a little day where we just do flowers I'm happy to do that or if you just want to do backgrounds or if you want to do more faces, more girls, more boys let me know. Okay, I shall leave you all. Take care. Bye everybody. Bye.